Kitty? Hello, Kitty? Alisa? Alisa? I want to just see if there's any marks. Okay, and turn them over. Okay, turn around, please. Okay, now I need you to drop the back. Okay, all right. Are you feeling safe, Atta? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ninety-seven floor. More blue today. The capillary refill is good, but her nail beds are more blue than pink today. But her fingertips are warm. Eighty-six over forty-nine. Forty-two. What happened yesterday? Uh, Thank you. Do. Did you eat dinner? No. Uh, Have you been getting busy? Yeah, I always do. Jacket. Thank you. If you don't touch nothing. We're gonna we're gonna search everything. What I want you to do is just sit down, relax. Now we do have a safe. Okay. Any any large sums of money you want to lock up. Okay. You're responsible for anything you lock up in your wardrobe. Okay. Lock your wardrobe at all times. Keep the key with you at all times. Thank you. And good luck. <laughs> so this is our dining room. And what you'll see is posted all around the dining room. We have some of the dining room rules. We ask that you don't bring any bags, backpacks, purses, blankets, jackets into the dining room for obvious reasons. We don't mm -hmm. want anyone hiding any food in there. Did you put anything in it? Or have you been putting I anything in it? it? I didn't have a 60 cc syringe. Have you been putting anything in it though? No. You take all your meds orally? Yeah, and then, I mean, I was doing two feedings, but not, okay. not for the past three days. Alright. Any suicide attempts? Mm, no, but very close. Tell me what very close means. Um, I'm a nurse, and I had taken some insulin from the hospital. And it took a lot not to just inject myself. And then once I was crushing up my pills to just push through my tube, mm -hmm. and I don't know, I just stopped because 
I can I was living in my brother's house and I couldn't let my nephew and my brother and my sister in law find me and my mom probably was the mother was and my twin sister. It's probably the reason why I didn't do it. You have a twin sister? What medication was it that you were crushing? <laughs> And I Prexa, Seroquel, Trazodone, Ambien, Clonopin, Risperidol. I hadn't been saving up. It makes me so sad to think I was that bad. <laughs> You want the... No, I'm... You can pop in my hand, I've got a cap. Alright. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hello. <laughs> so confused when you talk about people and I don't know who they are. I thought your name was Angie. You thought my name was Angie? <laughs> Where the hell did you get Angie? I thought that's what you said. Angie Polly. Angie Polly. I don't know. Y'all want to know the I smoke porch the rules? Yeah. The rules for the smoke porch are totally different from the rules in there. You can talk weight calories and numbers on the smoke porch. We don't care. We don't really do um, you can staff bash on the smoke porch. In fact, we do it quite often. Um, you can make fun of other residents on the smoke porch. That's not a problem. Um, confidentiality. And actually, confidentiality does work here. It's like sacred out here. Yeah. Yeah. I was supposed to go to Disney World the first week in June with all my family. I spent my birthday and Christmas and New Year's in the hospital. That sucks. I have this whole trip planned for my birthday on Monday. And so they're still celebrating my birthday without me. I came to Renfrew after a suicide attempt over two pieces of pizza. Uh, that was not, obviously not the whole reason why I tried to kill myself. That was just kind of the straw that broke the camel's back, I guess. Dieting has always been a huge part of my life. I remember all the things that are symptoms of eating disorders that we know of now being taught by my family to you know, cut my food into really small pieces and chew very slowly and take your time and um, you know always drink water in between so that your stomach fills up faster. I was counting calories and counting fat by the time I was 11. Happy birthday to Only 10 minutes to get this thing down. One, two, three. Happy birthday, Polly. To cookies and cupcakes. Thank you. <laughs> and tag the tax afterwards. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, this gets to count as one of my three desserts. Oh, it's the better. It's like really, really sweet. <laughs> like, really. Like, not good sweet. See, I wanted a bran muffin. <laughs> With a candle in it. <laughs> this, like, really sucks. You can do it. I 
take a bite if I get for you. This is community group. Welcome to community. Would somebody like to tell us a little bit about community group and read for us and give us the rules of the group? I will. Thank you. This is community. This is where like, you, you can do confrontations, ask or receive he support. What else? Oh, you can't, you have to have the stick in order to talk. No weights, calories or numbers. What's said in the room stays in the room. No three or four letter curse words. Okay. Today I know that I'm taking a huge risk at lunch and I just wanted to ask for support and getting, getting me through it because <laughs> I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to. So, and I know I have to because that's best for me. Okay, this is going to be kind of hard, and if I get out of line, let me know. Speaking just for me, it's hard for me, Brittany, to support you or to offer support to you because um, you've been here for like three or four weeks, and like I've told you before, you offer great advice to people, but um, it's almost like you completely refuse to accept your own advice. My feeling is that you um, want to be the sickest one here. Um. You know what, Brittany, I'm gonna just ask that Polly finish and then we can give you a chance to, to speak, okay? Why are you so worried about what other people think? Because that's what I've always cared about my whole life. That's the reason why I lost weight in the first place. When I was about eight, I became a compulsive overeater and closet eater. I started dieting when I was 12 because I, I had bad body images and a lot of my peers were a lot thinner than I was and I was just always that the big girl and so I wanted to change that image. When I was eating nothing, my mom would force me to eat a at least anything, but then I would purge that. The purging started like when I was 15. I kept it secret for about a month and then I told my mom. She knew. She just didn't know what to do. She was, cause she, she um, she has an eating disorder also. We would do this thing called chew and spit <laughs> and it would, we um, we would have the greatest time with it. Like, we would ride bags and bags of candy and just chew it and obviously spit it out. We just thought of it as a good time. We didn't think of it as a problem. And it was. Gosh, I'm so getting used to your hair. Yeah. Yeah. I know, it's really nice. Oh, you can tighten. Should we have one? What are you going to have with it? Um, some very much <laughs> Something's missing. Why are you yeah. shaking? No, I think I'm good. You ready? Wait, the dairy. Get a yogurt. No, you guys are nutritionists now. If I'm eating healthy, so are you. <laughs> do they still do monitor to make sure you finish it? Yeah. No, 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 they, they don't. They trust you. Oh. Do you trust me? That's some bitter. I think that's, I don't know what that is, if it's zucchini or not, but it's... 
Not very good. I think the yellow stuff is okay. Squash. Mm -hmm. What is it? It's a black bean burger. Is there, it's, is it's there carrots in it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on, try it. Should I? Mm -hmm. Sure. I'll cut a piece. I don't like the roll. I'll try the bean oh, burger. And I can't, I can't eat the cheese. I'm already having dairy. <laughs> what that stirs up in you. Oh, or, like... It scares me terribly because then I realize how sick she really is. Mm -hmm. And then the other day we were at the beach and she asked me, like, she's like, straight up, Kelly's not here. Mm -hmm. Do you think Kelly's big? And she doesn't even weigh 100 pounds. And Kelly is her twin sister. Yeah, yeah. And it's not that I don't think she's thin. I just... I don't know. I just, I don't want to look exactly like her. Mm -hmm. But I don't want to be bigger than her either. Right. Right. And it seems like there is that competitive aspect. Like, if I get bigger than her, that's like the end of me. <laughs> like, everybody just loves her. And Do you know what is sad, though? Is that everybody feels that same way about Shelly. You know, that's how she used to be before the eating disorder of gotten her so depressed and everything. I used to have a personality. <laughs> Is Valentine, and nice meeting you. Okay, I'm just one of the side dicks here. We work on a level system here. That means that every patient who enters comes in at level one. Level one is kind of the base, and then you move up the levels. Each level basically affords you different privileges, and if you get pushed down a level, it affords you different limitations. But we're going to work towards a positive direction. When I was seven, my mother took me to the pediatrician for. I think it was an ear infection or, or something. And the pediatrician said, what do you need to do about your daughter's weight? And my mother said, what do you mean, what am I gonna do about her weight? <laughs> She's seven. And, uh, and what's wrong with her <laughs> weight? And he said, well, she's fat. And he said, she's fat. She's seven years old, this is baby fat. They started me with a dietitian at age seven. I remember specifically, it was a thousand calorie meal plan. And after I took off six pounds, they gave me a Snoopy notebook, and I thought that was the greatest thing. It was <laughs> because it was positive reinforcement. I thought, hey, this is great. You're gonna smile for me. <laughs> Every few weeks or so, I would binge and purge. I would just do it over and over and over again for um, three, four days. And it usually wound up resulting in dehydration and hospitalization um, because I would also use diuretics, use hydrochlorothiazide and laxatives and enemas and Ipecac. I could tell you about one particular binge. There was nothing enjoyable about it. I started out that morning at Dunkin' Donuts and I had gotten a dozen donuts. I went to Burger King and had gotten three biscuits and make it maybe like a bacon and cheese croissant. Then I went to McDonald's and ordered a few breakfast items as well. And then I went by the grocery store <laughs> and picked up a few items for after breakfast. Two half gallons of ice cream, two bottles of whipped cream. I don't know. These little pastry things and peanut butter. 
and marshmallows. I went home and uh, had the donuts and the breakfasts from McDonald's and Burger King. But at that point I was so stuffed I thought I was going to die. I, I think I had chest pains and I, so I purged and then had the rest of it. And then for lunch, went out and did it again. Any restricting? Yeah, it's usually restricting. It's, I try to keep my calories um, under 200 a day. I tried so hard to find satisfaction through other accomplishments, but nothing measured up to this one. And I remember at one point years ago thinking, so be it. I mean, this is what I really want. This is the one thing that I want so bad. I just want to be thin. So if it takes dying to get there, so be it. At least I'll get there. Okay. You're finished eating at 20 till the staff will Hey, Brittany, come on in, sit down. Make yourself comfortable. How are you doing with your fluids, Brittany? I don't know, I've just heard a lot, like, how Maybe fluids you... can make you bigger than food does, and that... Who told you that? A, a lot, it's, it's flying around. Well, should you listen to your nutritionist, or should you listen to the other eating disorder patients? I don't think? know, I should listen to fluid my nutritionist. Fluid pushes fluid, just so that you know. Are you acting out on any other symptoms? Is I was going to talk to my therapist behavior? about it. Why? What? Cutting? Pur purging. Purging? Are you purging? I have been. When cutting. are you purging? I, I did probably at least 12 times when I've been here. You purged 12 times? So how come when I'm asking you how you're doing and you're never bringing that up? So I've never had the openness to say it. Did you purge last night? No. No. When's the last time you purged? Two days ago. Okay. I just hate getting bigger. I don't know if I want to talk about it anymore. You know, you're here to get help, and we want to be able to help you. But part of that is this isn't a locked facility, you know, and you need to be honest with us. I'm glad you're honest with us now. However, I think you've spent a lot of time here not being honest with us. Because, you know, eating disorders are about hiding things and secrets. So, you know, you need to get over that part if you're really serious about getting better. Hey mom, it's just me. Um, I've been trying to get a hold of you guys for a while now, but I'll just keep on trying. Uh, I really need to talk to you, and uh, it's re it's really important. So, just try to keep a line open. All right, bye. Hello? Oh, she's on the other phone. Do you, uh, hang, hang on one second. Um, I'm okay. Yeah. Yes, very. It's like a mixture of college, high school, elementary school, and... Hello? 
Oh, yeah, hang on. I mean, it's like Alcatraz. You, you know, they dump out your luggage and search everything and with gloves on and stuff. And it's like so humiliating. Hello? Brittany! I'm right here. Okay, we'll, we'll switch phones. Hello? Mom. Finally! Like, I'm not doing good. I don't want to go home. But, Mom, I don't want to stay here anymore. I just want a break. But it's been a month, Mom. I, I'm not getting anything out of this. How much money are you spending? Mom, I can't live with this guilt. How, how much? Yes, it is, Mom. This is going to be on my back forever. Parents usually have their own idea of what an eating disorder is, you know, what's been going on with their, with their child, and uh, I'm interested in hearing what you make of this stuff. I think it started when she went up to Utah. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of things that led into it, but uh, she does have an eating disorder and she does have problems. I believe a lot of psychiatrists has prescribed a lot of medicine that she is hooked on and she can't get off of it. Are you saying that? There was a lot that played into it leading up to going to Utah. Well, me and her mother had a divorce, and uh, her mother drug her up there to Utah. And uh, Utah is a different, I don't know if you've ever been there, it's different. Everybody mm -hmm. eats vegetables, they don't eat good food. And, right. You know, they walk their little dog in the afternoon and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And uh, I believe she got into the habits of up there in Utah and uh, peer pressure, her kid, you know, her friends and all that. Mm -hmm. I think that led a lot into her being the way she is. I don't think it's Utah, and I don't think it was because I, I haven't worked hard enough, but I'm just, like, really scared of being independent and being responsible and being on my own. I am. It's really hard to be here. It's like giving up all the control that you had, or you thought you had, you know. It's kind of a control thing for me, like I control what goes in to my body and, you know. It's like you're just, your mind is consumed with all these negative thoughts about yourself and I don't know. I'm just not happy anymore, Dad. Ken, I'm wondering what it feels like for you to know that as much as you want to, to solve it, you know, you may not be able to. It's really in her hands. I mean, it just, are you a parent? No, no, well, not. you have no idea. <laughs> well, tell me. Uh, I, I want to have an idea of how it feels for you. It uh, it hurts. It hurts inside. It hurts inside to know that you're sitting right here and you got a little daughter that's hurting and there's nothing that you can do to help her. You know, there's actually nothing that I can do to help her. What's that? Oh. oh. <laughs> I'm just having a really hard time with these resources. <laughs> just think of it like this. Once you get your body healthy, you'll never ever have to look at a resource again. <laughs> It's just so hard for me to drink them because I've had them in my tube for so long. I know. <laughs> Look at all the support you have. Here you go. Taking it like a man. <laughs> On with life. There you go. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Wait, did you say it? Purge yesterday, didn't you? Mm -hmm. Like, no. Are you using that tube for anything? Nope. That I need to know about. Are you sure? 
about last night. It was rough. Because after the two resources, I flipped out and I started to purge the. Purge through the tube? Uh -huh. I started to, but I stopped. Did you get anything out of it? Mm -mm. Well, yeah, a little. Okay. Not a lot. Okay. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. Thanks. Every picture that I have from about, I'd say, the past five years, most of them have a tube in my nose. My dad was like, oh, my child can't have a tube in her nose. And so he took me to the doctor. I get put under and I wake up with a tube in my stomach. It was horrible. It was the worst pain I've ever, ever felt. When I first got it in, I was like, well, this is like easy access to my stomach. I could flex my muscles in a certain way and stuff would come out or I would just take a syringe and like suck things out which is totally disgusting I know but I had to get it out of me and it wasn't even like I binged it just anything I ate like if I ate like a couple bites of bread I would get it out it was like I loved I don't know it was like a good feeling because I didn't have to throw up I just had to suck it out with a syringe what I'd like you to do is to do an outline of what you perceive to be your body image. Stand back here for a second and take a look at it and tell me what you think when you're looking at it. I think it's about accurate, but the arms might be bulging out just a little too much. That's a, a stocky person. A stocky man. <laughs> it, it does look pretty masculine, so I'm just curious as to what that means for you with your eating disorder and your, your body image. That this is yeah, the kind of image that I, you see of I yourself. Think that I, am, I, I think that I'm short and stocky. What are your thoughts? I don't know, for a fleeting moment, I thought, no, it can't be. You made a mistake. You went in too far. What do you think, looking at this now? I see problem areas. We're going to do Shelly first. She had a pulse deficit yesterday, 62 to 88 in the morning, and they repeated them at 1 o'clock in the afternoon, and it was 78 to 115. She did admit to me yesterday during vital signs that she's been purging How through the tube, it? letting it's it come right out of the tube. Mm -hmm. well, I guess we're learning, huh? And I think probably she's being more honest right now than she has ever been before in her life. But on the other hand, I think there's a part of her that really wants to go back to the eating disorder, go back to abusing substances. Mm -hmm. She's not real happy with the fact that I um, took her off the clonopin and I'm, she's on the Librium detox. She reported to me on Monday that she was having a really high degree of depression and anxiety and basically was sort of jonesing for me to give her some anti more antidepressants or something like that. How's she doing in terms of therapy? Yeah. Therapy has been going quite well. She is trying to do things differently this time, she says. It's being open with everyone and honest with everyone and, and not lying the way she says she has been in the last six years of treatment. You see, I get a very different feel for her, Adam. You know, I think she's very sneaky. I think she's very manipulative. Um, she, she missed several supplements over the weekend. She was not consistent at all. Um, she did do them yesterday, but I don't trust her as far as I can throw her. We just have to ask her to cooperate with us. Hey, Shelly, how are you? 
Probably not going to be very good. Well, welcome to team. Hi. It's good to have you back with us. Um, part of what I, you know, we're concerned about is the purging, your pulse deficits. We know you're going out to get the tube taken out tomorrow. And, you know, we just want to hold you for a little while to, you know, just to make sure that, you know, you're medically stable, that your physical condition is okay, and then, you know, we, you can move on from there. The thing that bothers me is I've been taken off all my meds, no mm -hmm. offense. And that has really, like, really, like, made me more anxious and more depressed. And I just want to go home. Polly? Hi, Polly. Hi, Polly. Come in and have a seat. Polly, I'm going to go ahead and give you some feedback, okay? okay? The team is feeling like you've been doing some hard work, so we want to acknowledge you for that. And in particular, um, also looking at the feelings of anger, taking risks. I know you took a risk in community yesterday, and I think that you got good feedback from the rest of the community that it was very appropriately done. But I guess what we want to tell you is that we want to recognize your hard work and that we would like to give you level three. Um, so I think that, you know, it's well deserved, and just we want to keep seeing you rise to the occasion okay so so don't stop working okay okay Thanks. that's it well done good job, good job. So you happy to have the tube coming out no you want it to be in really it's easier with it in or? yeah <laughs> Why I think? Yeah. Is that what you thought? Yeah. yeah. Well, you're such a beautiful girl. I hope you. <laughs> you are. You have a great personality. Yeah. <laughs> Try and enjoy your life. Okay, mom. <laughs> That's what my mom said. Just get enough preaching. I'm sorry. All right, regular bumper. She can't have anything to drink now either. Hi, we're all done. How you feeling? Okay. Maybe a little sick. Does this shit last all day? Feels pretty good, right? Yeah. She looks like she's having fun. She's yeah. chilling. Just dip or? Yeah, she's just enjoying the ride. Okay. I don't want recovery. I don't want anything to do with it. I want my children to have a normal life, but I don't want it. Do you know why I went in the Air Force? No. Nobody knows why I went in the Air Force. No. To this day, it's a mystery. Why do you go in the Air Force? Why'd I went in the Air Force to lose weight. It was the middle of desert storm, and I went in the Air Force to lose weight. I thought if I live a um, first lifestyle, I will stay thin. My, my strong feeling is that there is a part of you that wants recovery. Not for your children, not to appease your family, but for you. The kids. The kids. I don't want to leave them without a mother. They didn't ask to be brought into this world. And they're the only thing and people in my life that I've ever known how to love, like truly love. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to show love to people. In a way, they're the better. of me. 
they're all the good in me. And I have an opportunity to to do it all over again with them and do it right this time. But I haven't, and I can't seem to do it. Hey, I'm Polly. Hi, how are you, Polly? Good, freaking. I just was informed that insurance says I'm done next Wednesday. Okay. And, my, and you know, it just was kind of thrown on me, just like this. Okay. A second ago, and I'm freaking out. Okay. The insurance said, well, she's at level three, and she's maintaining her weight. So you're planning on leaving on Wednesday, then? Well. Because of the situation. I mean, insurance is saying that they're not going to cover anything else. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're looking at the extended care option. Yes. I don't feel ready to go into extended care. Okay. I don't feel ready to go home. You know, I would uh, encourage you to talk to Peggy first. I would just relax. Don't panic. How do you relax when you get hit with this on Friday? Well, we, I mean, we never discharge the people that fast. We need more information. This looks very tough for you. And, um, you know, we'll follow up. You know, i got to go to the damn beach right now, and I don't want to go anyway. And I was, I haven't wanted, that's not the mood. I just, yeah. the whole beach bathing suit, you know, that whole thing, eating an ice cream, you know. And so right before I get it, I have to prepare for this, I'm hit with insurance. Yeah. It's great to see how motivated you are, though. I mean, you really want to recover. And if I go home right now... Yeah, I'm um, just not ready. I'm going to... No, I mean, I'll be right back mm -hmm. where I started. Yeah. That's great. If this appeal is denied, then I have no insurance coverage. And it's like they want me to stay till Friday, at least. I'd be asking my parents to work over $4,500 for nothing. I wouldn't get shit out of the next three days. And, I mean, I could move straight into extended care, but they just told me I'm not going to be able to have my same therapist that I've had for nine weeks. Everybody else that moves to extended care keeps their same therapist, but mine is too busy, she said. I noticed that a couple of you are struggling through the meals today. I wonder what's going on for you guys. Is there any way that you can look at that as just, just bread, yeah. just cheese on top of it, and tomato sauce on top of it? Mm -hmm. Tell me what's going on. What's making it hard for you to eat this today? It's a hard thing to eat anyway. Okay. I don't need this on top of everything else. Okay. I wonder if we can give support to Polly at our table. I wonder what I really we... don't want to talk. Okay. You don't have to talk, but you know we can provide support for you, right? I'm sorry to call you at work. That's okay. You got a split second? Yeah. I need you to book me a plane ticket as soon as possible. Why? Because I'm coming home. No, you're not. Yes, I am. No, you're not. What do you mean, no, I'm not? Because I just talked to Peggy, what's her name, and you've been extended a week. No, I'm, I don't want to. Why? Because I'm, they're going to throw me at a hole with a whole different therapist. Look at this as an opportunity that God is opening a door that you apparently need. 
you have been so fortunate to be down there in the first place. And I think you know that. You have got to get the right attitude. Mom, I'm trying. I'm trying to have the right attitude. Look, I've been down. Oh, shit. Quit saying shit. Sorry, what time do you get off work? Because it's, um, it's my cigarette break, and I've got to have a cigarette. So why I don't lose weight? Maybe you need to eat a little less but more often. I work a lot. I move my body like a crazy. I think a lot. I'm very stressing guy. So how do I, how do I lose weight? I don't know. Well, you're losing weight. Yeah, I lose it, but not the way I want to lose it. You're going to have to go to after me with the patients. <laughs> process. <laughs> He's going to have to process it. No, you got that secret for me. How lose 20 pounds in two months. Why look like I have the secret? <laughs> Do I look like I have the secret? <laughs> nah. to Becca about it because she was asking where we were going to go and I was telling her and she's like for three hours <clears throat> and I was like Becca I was like Michelle and I both got our degrees in literature I was like for us going to a bookstore for an hour and a half is heaven I know and she's like oh I can totally see that you're such a good liar that is perfect okay. The big one, purple, the small one, red. Um, it's the symbol of recovery from an eating disorder. I signed that paper. What, saying no tattoos? No tattoos, no piercings, no I know, and I'm so wanting a piercing too while I'm here. I already told Shelly. Okay. We could show Shelly, but I don't know if we could show anybody else, because I don't know if I can trust him. Kylie. Kylie, I could trust. But that's it. <laughs> and they're making a spot there. Making a spot? Yeah, they're trying to fuck a spot. Why, dude? Don't get stressed. Well, no, I'm done. Yeah, I'm going. Yeah, we're both just working to maintain. What do you guys do? You guys cute? Are you guys those kind of people? Are you eating cute? No. Restrictors. You're what? Just don't eat. Don't eat. What yeah, we do now? I mean, I've been there for nine weeks. That's horrible. You said the whole thing. You know what you do is eat six small meals a day. Rather than three big ones, it speeds up your tablet. Really, how come it's a hundred for down here now? But I would think you get to work in my car chair again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Should make it cost less. Why oh, is done? We're gonna close the door. Why? How long did it take? Did I? No. Did you ask why you were getting that? You did? Was he hot? Yeah. Um, he is a mirror. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll be on full day with you. Um, so this cannot get out. What did I tell <laughs> Did you tell Kylie? Yeah, come in. You can't tell. Okay? Oh, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> One. Oh, wait. Come on. Okay. Right. One, two, three. <laughs> Cool. I won't wind it. Uh, Eleven. Okay. Thank you.
you're gonna go on backwards. Yeah, I know. It's blind weight. Yeah. Yeah. Go. <laughs> okay. Body check. Oh, yeah. That's, okay, let me see this. What? That's still from the last but one. It got so much better. That and this got, is from the iron. Yeah, arm. but it got better. Yeah, that's healed. No, no new scratches or areas? Oh, no. No, no, no. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Jen. My blood pressure okay? You know? Yes. My blood pressure is good. Pulses. Your pulses are good. There's no pulse deficit. You're good. And the weight? Good. I can't tell well, you. know, I ask day. you that every day. I know. So then why do you ask? Because I, I think maybe you. one day you'll tell yeah. me. Yes. Who's next? Me. Bye. Okay, all right. Be good. Me. Me, 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 me. You're taking all your fluids. I'm taking all of it, and I drink more than that. Okay. 2.7 pounds in one fucking day. That killed you. I mean, not really. <laughs> Sorry. Let me see. Yeah. One minute, my Polly Wally. <laughs> Are you ready? Are you, yeah, I'm ready. You're the one who's tired. <laughs> I love you, Polly. Mm. Did you move your bath yesterday? Of course, I shit every day. <laughs> I can always count on you for that. Okay. You moved your bath yesterday. Son of a bitch. Yes. You're going to need a resource plus. I need a lot of things. <laughs> Our bowl of cereal. Yeah, but that's one starch. You give me shit about 90 calories and a quarter gram of fat, and you're not. And a bagel? Those bagels only have 180. 180. 160. One, but I ate half, and there's only half a gram of fat. So do you think that's kind of hypocritical? Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. I have more starches on my plate. Sorry. More starches on my plate. I don't care. Obviously, you can eat it. Shelly to do? She's resource plus for less than 100% and weight loss. She's down 1.4 today and she'll need one. She was also down on Monday but she refused it and it was reported that there was a partially digested veggie burger found in her room. Diane found it. I really feel like she is purging though. She's very pale and washed out. I agree with you. I She's up to something. We, we really you know, have to be careful and watch this click that's forming between Shelly and Polly and Kylie also. It's, it's not a good thing. I think we just need to keep a close eye on the alliances that are happening in the community. And I think there's going to be much more potential for acting out that we need to kind of be aware of. Shelly? Hey, Shelly. Hi. So, we're, uh, we're worried about you, Shelly. You're starting to get back into that role that you've done other times in treatment where you're, where, where you're screwing up. 
This is a position you tend to put yourself in again and again and again. And the fact that um, in your room was found a garden burger that was freshly eaten. I mean, we don't know. In my room? Mm -hmm. I haven't had a garden burger for the past week. I, I guess what I'm saying to you at this point is I don't trust you. I'm being honest with you. I think I think you came in here with good intentions. I give you a lot of credit for being here. I think you can do a lot of work, but I'm concerned about the people you're hanging out with, the pulse deficits. There's a couple of things. It's not that it's one thing. We're going to move you to partial day room, and you're going to be in a position where you can prove yourself once again. Thanks. Is that it? Oh. I'm not burging and I'm not gonna say it anymore. Like I'm not gonna, I feel like they would just want me to say, yeah, I am, and I'm not. I would tell you, I would not be here if I was burging. Why is it waste the money? Well, do you understand like you wanting to leave and if Yeah, because if Jody doesn't trust me, she okay. flat out told me and I don't trust her. She wants to make me a big fat ass and I'm not. I just really feel like something's up and you just- Nothing is up. What I want you to understand though, is I understand how it might be really difficult for you to say. Oh my God, no, it's not difficult difficult to say if I were purging I would tell you all right I'm not fucking throwing up God. Really, how is it to be challenged right now and not be trusted I mean that's the bigger issue here Stay off the, uh, yes it is and I'm gonna put that challenge back on you people trust me everybody trust you not everybody okay I want you to think and sit with that right now okay. I don't want to sit with that I want to get the fuck out of here okay you can you sign your 72. I can't wait. One of the things that you have to understand, though, the language has to be different, Sorry. okay? Because it's just disrespectful to everybody. Sorry. I got fucked up again. Sorry, I got screwed That's up right. again. When are you leaving? I said Monday, but my mom's flying out Sunday, so I'm leaving Sunday. You really think your mom's going to watch you? Especially if somebody's fucking framing me. I feel like I'm in jail, like I'm supposed to confess. If they keep me in line enough, like that's why I know why jail people confess. I said that. I was like, now I know what it feels like to be in interrogated. Yeah. I was like, no wonder so many innocent people confess because you keep them in one room and Tomorrow, you sit there in and community, you. I'm like, somebody better fucking admit it because I am not taking the blame for this shit. Where's the lighter? If I got fat, you would tell me. I would. They're just trying to... to no, Mom, I can't out. trust anybody. They don't trust me. Why don't they trust you? Because somebody put a garden burger in my room. Somebody snuck it out of the cafeteria. Signed a 72-hour form to withdraw from treatment. You think that's the answer? I don't know. I got so mad, and I don't... People don't trust me here. But you've got to realize that this is part of the healing. I mean, and part of the, the stuff you've got to go through. And you've got to gain trust back yeah but i've been doing everything do you know how many times you've said that i know but this time i've i've been honest with everything oh well, i hope so i really hope so i'm in trouble and i'm tired Yikes. 
han entrado. Ay. <laughs> Just stay here. Night, Kylie. You gotta go. I'm already in trouble. Well, you're the one that fell on me. <laughs> Biatch. One of the reasons why I think all of you are here is because your life was very unmanageable. So you came in here and the structure that we have and the rules and policies and procedures are to really get your life more manageable. And I guess what I'm most astounded about right now is just things that I'm hearing in the community. And number one, the blatant disrespect of staff. And when people are smoking, in their bedrooms, it's a very big safety issue for everybody in this room. And when people aren't really following the structure, it puts all of you, as well as staff, in an unsafe place. I want to see a show of hands. Who really wants to be here and who wants to get better? Okay. Okay, so think about that. Who raise their hands. And I really want to hear about the distraction. Polly, you want to start? Yeah. Um, I just want to apologize to everybody in the community. Um, I um, was smoking in my bathroom, and um, that was against the rules, and I knew it was against the rules, so I was, you know, putting, I guess, everybody at risk if there was problem, a fire, or whatever. Mm -hmm. Were you the only one smoking in the bathroom upstairs? Yes. You were the only one. People know otherwise this is a, a, this is a place to kind of talk about that. I can't lie. I was in there. Mm. Mm. Once or tw well, twice. Okay. You were in there too? Okay, thanks. I wanted to, I, you know, I just figured I'd take the fall. Um, that friends take falls for friends. Yeah, and okay. We'll talk about that. Brooke had her hand up. I was in the bathroom smoking too. Okay. Polly, I gotta say that I'm frustrated that she asked you a direct question and you said that you were the only one and she said to you, you were the only one and you said yeah and you had the integrity stick. You didn't have to say names but you were lying again and that just frustrates the hell out of me. Maybe because I do it, I don't know. But um, it just frustrated me. And I'm sorry about yesterday, oh, I was screaming. I'm sorry about my language. I'm really trying to work on that, but it's when I get in a place where I feel like I'm being controlled. I get angry and I do swear. But um, another thing was I just feel like I can't trust a lot of people, especially when somebody won't admit to what they've done. And if somebody had food, I mean, I don't mind you know, because I'm already, I already got dropped level, and my bathroom's locked and everything. If anybody did that, you're only going to hurt yourself. And I'm honest about everything I eat. And I do leave stuff on my tray that I'm not going to eat. And I do say I'm not going to do that supplement. But at least I fucking have the balls to tell somebody that I'm not going to do it. And I don't hide food. And I don't purge. And I don't exercise. I don't. And I would, and I can't lie anymore. I'm like, I feel too guilty. That's why I could let Polly take the blame. And I knew I was going to do it today because I knew she was going to try to. And I knew, I mean, I can't lie anymore. And I'm sick of lying to myself. And I'm, I'm going to, if I stay, I am going to remove myself a lot from the community and focus on myself more. But, um, because I do want to get better. And I know that people around do have an influence on me, but it's my fault because I let them. But I am going to try harder. So. A lot of the people in the community said, we're here for our own recovery and we can't get sucked into this negativity and we have to what a good all... Of it, was, it was rampant. Yeah, and we have to all really try to recover and we have got to do this for ourselves. And what happened also was that apparently Shelley was accused of um, taking a garden burger and throwing it away. Um, somehow it, the story got told that it was in her room. It wasn't in her room. It was in the bathroom down the hallway. It turns out that Samantha admitted that she was the one who threw out the garden burger, and she's the one who's been hiding food. So that's, that's, that's the story of the garden burger. I'm 
Hello. Hi. Nice to meet you. Jody Crumholtz. How Becky. are you? Becky. How are you? Both Becky and Shelly have a, you know, a lot of questions about food and weight gain. And <laughs> so let's try to okay. get that in the open. I'm done. Gaining weight. <laughs> is that a question or is that a <laughs> statement? Yeah. yeah. That's. I just feel like this is a good weight for me. I'm really uncomfortable. It's too much food, Jody. I would be a very bad nutritionist if I stopped you from gaining weight now because, you know, one cannot be healthy in their 80th percentile. You know, I mean, you you're in your low 80s. Well, I, I beg to differ. I've never been. <laughs> I've never been. What weight are you looking at? Um, I, I feel that Shelly needs to reach 100 pounds. Um, I think that at a girl her age and her height, that's normal, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. I mean, I know you hate to hear that, but <laughs> so I really, I, I like you a lot. I really want to work with you. Um, I know you've been a little bit angry at me this last couple of days and everybody else around here. You haven't apologized yet. Apologize for saying that I didn't trust you? No. Just and also the, uh, what? we, the garden burger culprit. Festa. I am, I apologize for Thank that. Thank you. Yes. I do apologize. And it wasn't even in my room. Oh, no. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I do apologize for that. It was told to me that um, it was in your room. Again, I wasn't there when it happened. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, so I'm sorry. I didn't see it for my for my okay. Okay. Kelly. Oh, I'm just going to be honest. Yeah, I want you to be honest. We're 25. You have a college degree. And I am totally, like, I know, I understand you're having a hard time, Shell, and I understand all that. But it is time. I know. It is time to get going. You know, I mean, you have to, you act like you don't even want to. I don't have the time. I know. Mom is like, I can't do anything. I don't want her to die. Mm -hmm. And that's what you do, Shelly. You get down to 80 pounds. That is not, it's not even funny. I mean, it's not, it's like you're going to drop dead at any time. And you don't realize that. I don't want to say get a grip, but that's what I'm trying to say. Because it's getting old. I'm sick of, I'm sick of it. Of what? I'm tired of worrying. I'm tired of feeling like a bitch because you don't think I care and I do. I just, mm -hmm. I'm trying to just do my own thing too. I just, I feel so weak compared to her. Okay. So stupid compared to her. Mm -hmm. And I think I yell at her and we at her because we're yelling at her because she looks like me and because I want to, like, because I hate myself so much that I just yell at her because she looks like me and I feel like I'm yelling at myself. Do a sweep and make sure we just do a sweep and make sure we get everybody in here, please. Okay. We feel like we're needing to support the community a little mm -hmm. more. And I don't know people that may have been here before. We do something that we call room searches. Mm -hmm. This again is really to continue to support you, people that may be struggling, um, people that may have contraband. And obviously, some of the things that we're looking for are the things that you know you shouldn't have: gum, candy sharp objects, cigarettes, any kind of food, sugar, salt, mustard, ketchup, those kinds of things. And one for Never a dull moment of Well, people put shit under my pillow, and it's crying. <laughs> 
kind of tell us something up there. Tape measure. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Send me uh, some people up here, please. Robin had 40 packets of sugar. Robin did? Yeah. Wow. What's she doing with the sugar? Okay. Evidently storing it. <laughs> <laughs> did we get anything on Shelly? Yeah. Shelly had... Where's hers? There's Shelly. Yeah, I saw cigarettes. Ah, oh, you know what? She has one of the candy things, so that looks... Let's see what this fella is. It's in the mountain. Okay. And it really grammed around in mood stabilizer. Hopefully that's something she's on. Fuck. <laughs> oh. What did I find in your room? I fucking neuron in my room. Fuck. Holly <laughs> just came up to me and I feel like I'm like I'm really stuck because she's like, did you tell him that it came from me? And I'm like, well. Fuck, who else would it come from? Because I don't take 300, mm -hmm. take 600. And I was like, no, I didn't tell him. So she doesn't think that I told you guys. Mm -hmm. So we could keep that a little bit. Um, because she's like, this depends on my life. And I'm like, fuck, I already told. How do you feel about her putting you in that position? Well, it sucks. I, I would suggest that today... Like, I just can't live with all this crap in my head the rest of my life. What crap? Like, all this stuff about food and wanting to be thin and controlling it and... Like, I can't go on my whole fucking life with that in my head. Mm -hmm. Like, if it's that loud, then I cannot do it. All the time. Cause I can't fight it every minute of the day like I do. Mm -hmm. Okay, but I tell you that sometimes things that we say that we think aren't connected in here tend to be. So we start talking about stuffing your feelings down, putting on a happy face, and then from there we go to the food. And, and I really do think they are connected. I think that when you do assert yourself, when you do take care of yourself, when you're able to not have to put on an act for people, those symptoms will subside. Yeah. I wonder if you had thought about what we talked about yesterday, about things from the past that you think you might have gotten over that you really maybe didn't. Yeah. So I'm not over it. Okay. Well, I'm over it, but it affects me still. Mm -hmm. Still fucks up my relationships. Shelly, is it possible that the whole eating disorder, a great deal of that is, is carrying around things that you feel are really terrible and, and hard to talk about. I, I get the feeling that you carry things with you that, that you think are unspeakable, literally unspeakable. I mean, I don't tell anyone. I know. So why should I tell you? I just be woken up with this. We wanted to gather the three of you together because uh, we are having some major concerns about um, some things that have gone on, um, in particular things that sort of came up in the room search yesterday. And we feel that the three of you have information that we feel is very important that you get kind of honest about, have some integrity about, mm -hmm. so that you can work on your own issues here, but also so that we can get the community safe. Who would like to start? Uh, 
ังWas having a hard time and had just been pulled off of everything. It was just really hurting. I felt really like torn between two sides. Torn. I'm really confused. What What were those two sides? Well, the side of me that doesn't like to lie and feels really guilty about doing it, and then the side, Polly. Just being a good friend, and it was hard, you know. And you say that you know, friends wouldn't have put you in that position, but if my friend were having major anxiety too, I probably would have done the same thing. It, you're talking about potentially life and death. I mean, to give somebody else medication, you know, this was not under the care of a psychiatrist, you know. What kind of a friend is that when when they're really jeopardizing um, your life? She is the ringleader. She's got a lot of very negative power. You have more? Yeah. Come on in, guys. Okay. Thank you, guys. Shelley. Yeah. And I think what you did was really hard and really brave and showed me a lot of guts and integrity. Keeping the secret is destructive to you, to both of you guys. That's why we came. Okay. okay. What do you want to tell us? Um, we both know that a couple weeks ago, Polly and Michelle Graff got tattoos together. What are the two of you guys worried about at this point? I just hate when people are bad at me. I don't. Okay. The community can only be as healthy as the members that are in the community. Okay? And when people are holding secrets, and when somebody else is asking you to lie for them, then it takes away from you and your recovery. I give the two of you a lot of credit for being willing to go there, and I think you just need to stay in that space. I think it's real clear that we need to get Polly moving mm -hmm. out of the community yeah. uh, because she has a very negative Absolutely. Uh, influence on them. She's a, she's a bad a, seed. She's a... Tattoos, huh? Mm -hmm. I know. I wonder of what and where. Okay, I think it's going to be a bumpy night. Hello? Mom? Yes? Um, we need to start making arrangements for me to come home. I'm sitting here with the team. And they have are, are asking me to leave. I want to know why. Because I lack integrity. Things that she did were done weeks ago. Their issue is that I was given opportunity to confess these things and I didn't. Please give her another chance. Yes. I mean, she knows she's wrong. Please, there is nothing here to help her. There is no support system for anorexic individuals. Susan, this is please, a... please, I'm begging. Please let her stay. And if she does one thing, I'll never say another word. Her dad will not pay it ever again if you send her out. And I can't afford it by myself. <laughs> This is truly it. Again, we have to kind of look at where Polly's at and what she's willing to do. I'll do anything. Okay, but Polly I think that we've been down that road before. Is it possible, Susan, to make the discharge plans um, for Polly? Can we, can we get something set up for Polly to leave tomorrow? Oh, I'm sure you want her out as soon as you can get her out. Oh, I'm so mad at you all. 
I know she's made mistakes, but you are making a mistake to turn her away. Okay, and certainly we understand your frustration. <laughs> no, you don't. You don't. You haven't had a daughter in this situation. You do not understand. <laughs> So I think you and her dad need to talk about it in a different way. Is is that what you know? It's really not us kicking. For you to say, you I, don't know him. I'm so sorry, Mom. Okay. Mom, what are you doing? Hey, I just got kicked out. Thanks, y'all. Appreciate it. to the day where I'd be thrown up again. <laughs> I'm just too exhausted to fight it right now. a lot of sons, but a lot has happened, it seems like, the last week, the last week and a half. What does everybody think? Last week we talked about it's just so negative here and it's so chaotic and it's so dramatic, but only we can turn that around. And I was feeling at my lowest a few days ago, but the fact of the matter is the other night I, I really, really thought about it and part of me, for a fleeting moment, imagined a better life and maybe, no pun intended, but wants to taste recovery. I was talking to a group of people and I said, well, from here on out, I mean, there may be days that I don't want to get out of bed and I don't think I could go on, but I'm going to give it everything I got. And so I made a pact with a couple of people in here that I was going to do it. And they said, okay, I'll do it. And the, really the only requirement to join this pact is number one, you need to make positive choices. You need to be willing 
to not break the rules here in any way. And you need to be willing to try to give it everything you have. So if there's anybody else who would like to join me in turning Renfrew into a positive place, stand up. I just want to say that um, for you to say that, coming in from the state that you were in the first day, I just admire you for being able to stand up and say that. I'm really nervous about going home because I don't think I'm ready. I want to still lose 40 pounds to get to my ideal weight. I have my first day that I'm going to be back planned out and there's no food involved. Do you want to work in your container? No, I want to go home. Okay. You're going to wait for I'm again. But you don't have a mole. Look, the scars are almost gone. Off. You're crawling out of your skin, huh? I want it off, Mom. You don't understand. I want it off. Just I'm wondering, Brittany, if leaving is just bringing up a lot of things for you right now, and, um, and that somehow this is, is about trying to deal with the feelings that are, that are coming up for you at the end of treatment. Both Allison and I want to work very hard with you right now to try to keep things kind of put together. We know it's not fixed. We know there's still a lot of things to do, but I think there's a piece of work you need to do right now which is about being able to say goodbye and to get ready to move on to the next stage for yourself. And if you go into crisis too much with not eating and, you know, maybe talking about how you're going to revert back into your eating disorder or get unsafe in any way, those are going to be things that are going to distract you from dealing with the feelings that you're having about leaving. I don't feel comfortable with you leaving because I don't feel like you're ready. I'm actually scared to death for you. And um, that's something that's not really easy to say because as much as I want you to do good, and I really, really do want you to, just the fact that you're already slipping and you're still impatient. Do you want but treatment for me? If you don't want it, how are you doing? My mom's forcing me. She can't force me to do something that I don't want to do because she can't get in my head and control me. How old are you, 15? 15. Jen. What kind of things could you have avoided had you gotten help at 15? God damn, I would have enjoyed so many things. I looked back at 12 years and said, what do I remember? I remember sitting at tables. I remember going to Thanksgiving dinners with pre-packaged meals for me to sit at the table with other people eating my food while everybody else was enjoying Thanksgiving. It was embarrassing and it was shameful. And now I'm 28 and I'm a little girl with no period. And my boyfriend said to me, I want to spend the rest of my life with you. And at the rate we're going, I'm going to bury you in five years. I don't want anyone to get mad at me. Brittany, what's the difference between being mad and being concerned about somebody? What's the difference? I don't want anyone to be concerned. Okay. We see that someone that we care about is basically killing themselves. I just want everyone to let me die. I've watched someone die. It's not a pleasant sight. And I can't imagine losing a child. I mean, try to think about your mother. She wanted you to have life, and now you're just ending it because you want to be thin. My son 
is is everything to me. My kids are everything to me. I chose to bring him into this world. He's an innocent kid, and when he was two years old, I used him to feed my disorder every night. Gotta give Josh a bath, gotta give Josh a bath, gotta give Josh a bath. Took him in the shower, turned him this way so he could play with his toys while I did this down the drain. That's pathetic. Disgusting. I lost a child to bulimia. I've miscarried. That's what life becomes. I don't watch TV. I haven't seen any movies. I have no friends. The only thing in my life is this. I get on the scale, I get off the scale, I get on the scale, I get off the scale, I go out and run, I come back, I get on the scale, I change my underwear seven times before I leave the house in the morning. I change my clothes over and over and over again at two o'clock in the morning. It's the only thing that matters. That's pathetic. No, oh, I miss pathetic. doing that. I miss it so much. I was losing weight then, and that's what I wanted. I know you're in high school, and you're surrounded by it. Please, please. There's so many thin girls and I'm not one of them. And I can't take it anymore. She feels so I'm honest. I'm so sick of this. I hate me. I've always been overweight and I'm never going to be thin. I was always the fucking fat kid. I'm sick of it. I'm so sick of it. So I'm here. So you have plans for this evening? No. What are you going to do? I don't know. Is it going to be okay? It's going to have to be. Okay. Zero. You can call us if you need us. You know that. You know our number. Yes, one hundred and three. Seriously, if you're not going to be okay, pick up the phone. Okay. I will. Okay? Thank Cause you. Because you've worked very hard. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. tremendous amount of respect for how hard it is to do what you've done here. It's very difficult. We're done. All right, now. Bye. Go and you have
Oh, fun. I will. Promise? Mm-hmm. Okay. Come on. 